Well, hello, my little second graders. And how are you today? It's a beautiful day to be outside in your backyard. You know, I am very lucky because my neighbors who live behind me have built beautiful birdhouses in their yard. And so as I sit in my backyard, I am able to watch all the different birds gather around their yard and sit in their different bird houses. And it's amazing all of the different species I get to see. I'm so lucky. Look at this bird house. Look at the shape. Why do you think it stands up tall? Do you think it's because the birds are able to reach it faster? Or is it because there might be some little furry friends that might want to get into their houses to eat their food? What do you think? It is really funny for me to watch the squirrels try to climb up these trees and try to jump in the bird houses to eat the bird food. Oh, it happens all the time. And let me tell you, it is fun to watch. So you can see that there's little windows with a piece of wood that stands out that the bird can sit on and he can poke his head in where there is bird food. And my neighbor, Mr. Parkers, he makes sure that once a week that each of his houses has different types of bird food in them because each bird house attracts a different type of bird. So let me walk over here and show you some of their other bird houses that they have. Oh, well, look at that one. That's pretty fancy, isn't it? Yeah. And then there's an older one that sits on the fence. So look at all the shapes in that bird house. Boy, that is a, has almost like two layers of roofs on it. Very, very pretty. Bird houses are like, you know, houses for people. They can be drawn in different or created in different styles and made out of different materials. Oh, look at this one here. Yeah, here's an older one. This has been here for a while. And then you can see the back of this one. This is pretty because they have different types of wood um, that is adhered to the, the side of the house. Can you see that? Yeah, very pretty. So yeah, bird houses. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Oh, and here's Lucy. Say hello to Lucy. Oh yeah, Lucy says, why are you looking at our bird houses? Yes, sir. Ray. Okay, you know how much I love dogs. Okay, I will see you in a moment and we'll talk about our lesson. you coming in what's going on welcome to art did you think you weren't gonna see me oh goodness gracious of course you're gonna see me every week I am making videos for you every single week that will be on YouTube so once a week yeah go on to YouTube and there'll be a new art project for you just like we do at school what is our supply list well pretty easy paper you can use um, copying paper, that's fine. Scissors is always a good idea. Markers, crayons, pencils, uh, glue, that's a good idea to have. And if you can do Marty the Marker, that would be fabulous. And if you happen to have watercolors, that would be great too. So um, this week, we are gonna do our very first project. Um, what do you think it has to do with? Oh, I don't know. Can you guess? Did we talk about these little creatures a couple weeks ago when we were doing printing? I think we did. And I think today's lesson is going to talk about our feathery friends, birds. 
Oh, behind me, I wanted to introduce you because I know many of you will ask, what, what's, what's swimming behind you, Jennifer? Well, those are my son's goldfish and their names are Randall and Marlin. Can you guess what movie those names come from? I bet you can name those. So, let's talk about some just keeping things clean at your house. Make sure that you always put something down on the table that you're working with or at so you don't get it dirty. Put your grubby clothes on. I need you to come in with some creativity. I need you to be happy like I always want you to be. And hey, if you can turn some tunes on, that's even better because you know how much I love working with music. So I have never filmed myself before. So this is a little bit strange for me. So if you see something in my teeth, something in my tooth, please tell me, all right? Because I really have to know something's in my teeth, okay? All right, get ready. You ready, baby cakes? Because we are gonna do some art in a moment. Love you. Welcome, second graders. Okay, let's start our art project. Today, we're gonna be designing some bird houses like the ones that we saw in my backyard. And as you can see on this example sheet, I have all different types of bird houses with different shapes, some with just a simple rectangle square shape with a triangle on top. You can see others have a tilted line going in. You can see the top of the birdhouse is wider than the bottom. Um, here you have some with some decorative roofs. And here you have another one with a flat roof with square windows. On all of our birdhouses, you will see that it is placed on a shape which looks like what letter? Yep, the letter T. So I had some fun with this. Bird houses for sale. Find the house of your dreams. So I'd like to pretend our birds are going property shopping and they're looking for a home that they would like to move into with their family. So that gives you some different ideas and you can surely make some bird houses um, of your own design. But I'm gonna be showing you how to make the basic bird house, okay? So if you get your pencil and a piece of paper, we will begin. I'm going to be using the Marty the Marker so you can see. I'm not quite sure what, um, you know, how this is going to come out in video and I just wanna make sure that all of you can see what I'm drawing. So, to begin with, we will turn our paper the vertical way, standing up, he's wide awake. Remember the difference between vertical and horizontal, horizontal, I'm sleeping, vertical, he's wide awake. So we're gonna use it the vertical way because we just have more room to make the house grow up. Does that make sense? Okay, so at the top of our paper, we are going to make a dot at the center of the paper near the top, okay? And from that dot, we are going to draw two lines on an angle that, or you could say they tilt, I call them the slide line, slide. Don't go all the way down, slide. There's two angled lines. And this becomes the birdhouse roof line. And then what I like to do, it's like drawing it all over again, but I'm going to start right below and draw two lines that are parallel to the original birdhouse roof lines, okay? So it actually looks like one um, upside down letter V and then a smaller one inside of it. And then I want you to connect the edge of the roof line. So we've made our fabulous birdhouse roof lines. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we're gonna draw a line down from both sides and this becomes the side of the house. Now, if you recall, some of my houses 
these lines, they tilted in a little or they went straight down. That is completely up to you. You decide how you want your birdhouse to look. I'm going to just slightly tilt them in. I'm gonna start over here, just slightly tilt it in and there we have the sides of our house, okay? Um, now we're going to do the stand that the birdhouse sits on. And the stand actually looks like the letter T that we saw before. So I'm going to go all the way across and then I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker like I made the roof line. I'm gonna draw a line all the way across, parallel, and then right in the middle of the house will be the bottom of the T, okay? So you have the stand. Um, you can see that this part of the stand um, is a little bit wider here because I kind of shoved my house over to the side a little more. So yours might be centered, um, but that's okay if one side is bigger than the other, no worries. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add some circles for the openings. And again, if you wanna do a different shape, that is entirely up to you, my artist. You are the king of your castle. Oh, king of your birdhouse. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circle here at the bottom. And I think I'm going to do three circles in this birdhouse. Okay. So that allows the birds to fly in and get their food. So you want to make them not too large, but, you know, big enough so a bird could sit and um, go in there. Okay, now we're gonna do the decorative part. You get to decorate your birdhouse however you want to. Um, I think I am going to do some, uh, since it's an outdoor birdhouse, I am going to do maybe some flower petals around the opening because those circles make me think of a flower, but they might, um, you know, they might look like something different to you, so please feel free to add the decorations that you want to your birdhouse, and that could be anything. Maybe you want to turn your birdhouse into a fast food bird restaurant. I don't know. You decide. I'm going to add another circle just to give it a little bit of a decorative rim. When they go in, you can add some cool designs to your roof. So I want you to decorate your birdhouse. You can use letters, you can do anything that you want on the side of your house. It's your house, man. You are the architect, so you design it however you want. The main things I'm looking for is the roof, the walls, and that T-line. Capiche? Okay, I will see you in a moment. Have fun. Welcome back, my friends. After you've got your designs in your birdhouse, what I would like you to do then is to begin to add your color. Now, you could use pencils, you could use crayons, you could use markers, or you could paint your house with watercolors, or you could use a combination of everything. You know, it doesn't, you know, there's no rules on how you add the color. It's up to you. So you can see that I started with crayon and I am going to go in and I'm actually going to go around these little rims with colored pencil. So I've used crayon and pencil. It's kind of fun to use different things when you're doing one work of art. Kind of mixes it up and makes it interesting. So I'm going to continue on coloring my flower openings and getting a nice layer. Remember how we talked about really filling those shapes in with nice layers of color? You know, your paper is screaming out and saying, please, please put lines, put color on me, fill me up and make me beautiful. So think about your craftsmanship that we talked about in school. Um, 
I want to go and do the sky. One way to make clouds look like they're appearing is you can just leave some white of the paper. And I think we did some of this when we did our sheep, if I recall, earlier in the year when we painted. So, you know, just leave some white showing and take your sky all the way down because remember, these birdhouses sit up high in the air. Um, I'm showing mine where there's no trees or anything around it. If you do want to show some trees around your birdhouse, feel free to do that. But you can see how I have colored all the way up to the birdhouse and I've left some white showing the clouds. And you would take your sky all the way down, even under the birdhouse tee. And then continue coloring your whole birdhouse in. And after you're done with that, we will go on to the next step. Okay, have fun. Welcome back, my little love bugs. Did you have fun coloring? Oh, I bet they look fabulous. Okay, so this is an example that I finished. You can see that I used watercolors. And, oh, look at how I added different colors in the sky. If you want to, you know, really get artsy-fartsy and mix those colors, go ahead and do that. You can do that with crayon and it will look awesome. Now, if you look, you can see I've got one crazy looking bird down here who's a little bit, looks furry instead of feathery. And then I have this crazy looking guy over there. He's not quite sure what he thinks of this short guy over here. But I decided to create some colorful, crazy looking birds. And that's what you're gonna do. We're not gonna follow the rules and make birds like we did the other day that are uh, anatomically correct, like the cardinals and the blue birds that we made in school with our printmaking. You're gonna design your own bird today, okay? So let's look at how to draw a basic bird. You might want to just get the basic shape and then you can add more things. If you remember, the one bird that we started uh, when we were doing our printmaking was we curved around and came down and then we curved that around and met the other line at the bottom. It sort of looks like a teardrop if you look at it closely. And then we added the beaks and the eyeballs and the legs. I need you to make the legs thick because what we're gonna do is we are gonna be cutting these birds out. Parents, the reason we have them cutting them out is because it helps strengthen their cutting skills when we do detail cutting. So there's a reason why we just didn't draw the birds on the birdhouse. So if you look here, my extend that over. I'm going to give him a little bird wing here and maybe we'll see one in the back too. Maybe we've got some funny feathers at the top. That's a basic bird. If this one gives you um, some problems and you feel it's a little more challenging, then what you could do is maybe just start with a round circle, okay, and then make a triangle that's long and skinny and, and connect it to that circle. Then you could put a triangle beak on and he's saying, give me some eyes, give me some eyes, I can't see. So I'm gonna give him some great big eyes. And then you can give him another bird wing here and then give him his thick bird legs. Cause remember you're cutting those legs out my friends. All right. And then here is a simple bird. And then from here, you could, you know, maybe add some, you know, maybe some designs on him. Maybe you want some stripes. You know, these, maybe this bird is, has polka dots. I don't know. So then you will color your birds and then you're going to cut them out. Now, I want to remind you how to cut things out. You don't want to hold the big piece of paper. So take your scissors and it's like you're cutting a bubble around your bird. 
okay? Just cut a bubble. That way, when you go to cut them out, you just have this small piece of paper, not that big one that you've got to maneuver around. And remember, take your alligator scissors and take big bites out and turn the paper as you cut, not your scissors. Turn the paper. Don't try to move your arm around with the scissors because that is really hard to do, okay? So I'm moving the paper and not the scissors. And guess what? If you cut a leg off, no big deal. You could always glue that leg back on and it will look fabulous. In fact, on mine, I did cut his leg off, so I just glued it back on. So you will cut your birds out, and you can make more than one, and oh, make sure you color them before you cut them out, by the way. That was one thing I should have told you. And then you will glue your birds on, and that will be the end of the project. Oh, it's not the end, because what do we always do with our artwork? We always write our name. Okay. So, hey, Alexa, play Rock and Robin. Rock and Robin by Bobby Gay. Oh, here yeah. we go. Put some music, Put some music on. <laughs> Have some fun. I'll see you next week, love bugs. Have fun.